Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. I'm, so, I'm sorry about the sun. The sun is quite intense right now. It is Sunday and I slept in. I am out a little bit later than I should be, but it's not supposed to get too hot today. It's only supposed to get 90 degrees. So I didn't feel like I was in as much of a rush to get out early in the morning. So I am back here. I'm in the backyard, back by the greenhouse, and I am going to be planting back here today. I have to say that this whole area back here has become a work in progress, and that is primarily because the soil back here is absolutely terrible. It is terrible, terrible. I had a feeling it was bad, but as I was planting it in it over the past year, I realized really how bad it was. It is very compacted. It is um, over here on this side. It is very clay soil, and it just it just needs amending so so badly. Um, we planted or I planted some flowers behind the greenhouse this past season and let's just say they didn't perform very well and I'm almost positive that it's because the soil was so compacted and it didn't have any nutrients in it. So before I plant anything else, I want to make sure that it's completely amended with lots and lots of compost and we've already started that a little bit, especially behind the greenhouse, which is where I want to plant today. So here's my greenhouse and I just have to say my sun gold tomatoes they just won't stop producing. They just keep going. I have more coming. It's fallen over. We have had so many tomatoes. They're so yummy. This is such a good tomato plant for my area. It's called Sun Gold. 100% the best. So here you can see, let me show you, we have put a whole bunch of compost kind of all over the greenhouse. Now we need more in this area, but I was just so hesitant to pull the Super Tunia Vista bubble gum and the plain, the blue salvia, and the lemon coral sedum. It looks so pretty. I like couldn't bring myself, I couldn't bring myself to cover it with compost just yet. So we did end up putting a whole bunch of compost right here. This area right here, a hedge is gonna go, um, which is going to block all of our well stuff right there. So that should hopefully get in, um, be planted a little bit later this week. For today, I am gonna be working back here. What is it? What is it? What is it? I, don't, I have no idea what it was. It was probably a lizard. Distraction. Sorry. So you can see back here, we have amended a ton back here behind the greenhouse because I am going to be planting some crepe myrtles, which are just going to be beautiful. So we got about six inches of compost back here. And I yesterday, I don't know when you all saw that video, but I sewed my sweet peas and I sewed them in bootstrap trays and I put um, most of them in my office that I am letting germinate inside. But I had a whole bunch of extra sweet peas that I had sewed. Soaked. And so I just sprinkled them all. I mixed them all together and then I just sprinkled them all along by this back fence and kind of raked them in. So hopefully I will get some sweet pea growth back here on the back fence, which would be really pretty as a backdrop to these five crepe myrtles that are so beautiful. So these guys are center stage pink. Center stage also has red and coral. And actually my neighbor down the street, I'm not going to show you a picture of it, but just trust me, they, they have a hedge of center stage red and it's beautiful. It's so pretty. And then they have roses in front of it. And that's what they're using as a privacy screen in front of, um, uh, in, in front of their house. So what's cool about these is this dark foliage. Look at how beautiful it is. So when it blooms, the pink blooms or the red blooms or the coral blooms, those blooms contrast with this dark foliage and it is just the most beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, I am very familiar with these because I have participated in some plant trials at UC Davis. I've gone and I have voted on basically which, which plants do the best in our area, in this area. And what these plant trials are for is they take three of the same plant and they give one full amount of water. They give another one like half the amount of water. And then they give a third one only about 20% of the recommended amount of water. And then they watch it and they see how it does. And when I went and kind of assessed how these plants were doing, all of the crepe myrtles, the center stage crepe myrtles looked absolutely beautiful. So 
my point for saying that is these are definitely drought tolerant plants. They, they do better with water. They will bloom better. But if you have periods of drought, it's going to be okay. This is going to be able to handle it. So these get about six to 12 feet tall. I have a feeling mine will get closer to the 12 foot height because there's so much sun back here. Um, and they get eight feet wide, full sun. You want full, full, full sun for crepe myrtles. And these are hardy zones six through 10. So I think that they're going to be so beautiful back here. They're not going to get tall enough that I think that they're going to cause a big mess on top of my greenhouse. They're going to get maybe like right there. So any, any of the blooms that fall off are just going to fall off back here. And I don't care. I don't care what it looks like back here. I don't care if it's clean. I just want that beautiful color behind the greenhouse. And I think it's going to be gorgeous. Now my neighbors also have this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous barn that I love looking at. And they're not going to get tall enough where it's going to cover up the look of the barn. So that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted something tall so that it could frame the greenhouse, but not something too tall that would block the view. And Michael Glassman, he he actually is the one who originally came up with the idea of putting crepe myrtles back here. Um, I'm the one who decided on the center stage one. So really excited about those. I have five of them. You want to plant them about eight feet apart. So you can see I'm pre-soaking my holes like I do. I've got one in the middle, one here, and then I'm kind of curving them around the greenhouse so that hopefully as they grow together, it kind of looks like it's I don't know, like, like hugging the greenhouse almost. I am going to have to cut back my olive tree a little bit, but I'm okay with that. Uh, and then as they, as they grow up together, you can see there's a white flag there and white flag there. They're just going to kind of, just kind of wrap around the greenhouse, which I think will be really, really pretty. Uh, everything's on top of the table right there in my greenhouse because we were spraying another layer of the mulch glue, which has been fantastic, by the way. Mulch glue, gravel glue, a plus. So the other thing that's really neat about center stage crepe myrtles is they actually bloom earlier than the other varieties of crepe myrtles that, you know, that I have all around town. Um, so I have two Tuscarora crepe myrtles in my center island that we just planted. And I have another one that is the pink velour. And so these crepe myrtles, these center stage pinks are going to bloom first. And then those three are going to bloom after it. So basically it will give me a longer blooming season of the beautiful crepe myrtles which I'm just so obsessed with. I love them. So I'm going to get started planting these five crepe myrtles. I think it should be pretty straightforward, knock on wood. Again, I pre-soak the holes. Well, kind of, I still have these two to pre-soak. I am going to use my auger. Um, and then I am going to use these. If you see me using these little packs, it is because I am out. I have used up all the biotone that I got for this year. Um, a Spoma was kind enough to donate a whole bunch of samples to the Proven Winners pop-up that we had back in May and we gave away all the samples but then we had a whole bunch left over so I've just been keeping them and so now that I'm out I'm just using these packets so if you see me using these packets that's why uh, so I'm just going to put a pack in each hole and the reason why I'm doing that is because the Biotone Starter Fertilizer will help with the root growth which is exactly what I want in fall this time of year I don't want to give these guys any type of fertilizer because I don't want any new growth which you can already see I, I have some new growth already. I don't want to, I don't want any more new growth because I don't want the cold to nip them. We have about eight weeks until our first frost. Um, but root growth, perfect. Now for fertilizing crepe myrtles, you can fertilize them in the spring. You can also prune them in the spring, um, but you don't need to prune them. Like my arborist, uh, um, uh, like my arborist, Matthew from American Arbor, he always says to be really, really cautious and hold back on pruning your crepe myrtles. Only prune them if you absolutely have to. If they're really, really old ones, you can do like a regeneration prune, but otherwise just kind of leave them alone. Um, so I will be fertilizing these in the spring, which is kind of an all-purpose fertilizer for trees and shrubs, um, but I will not be pruning them because they're in spots where they can get their full height. They can be perfectly happy. I might deadhead them. Maybe, honestly, as I'm saying this, I'm not going to deadhead them. But if you do deadhead, then you can get a better show of blooms because they bloom on new wood. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get started.
Okay, so I got them all planted. That was relatively easy. I've got one, two, three in the middle of the greenhouse, four on the right side, and then five wrapping around. So easy soil to work through, but then once you get down to the native soil, of course it's a little bit tougher. Um, and that is because we just put on this compost. It will loosen the soil up, but it does take a while for it to work in. Um, but it was, I mean, it was fine, especially because we pre-soaked it. The only problem is, is when you do that, you end up working with basically mud and <laughs> I've already rinsed off my shoes. Um, so it's, it's kind of a mess, but I know that these plants are going to be super, super happy to have this amended soil. So these should grow pretty quickly. We will hook them up to drip um, and I'm just going to kind of leave them. I'm just not going to worry about it. Like I said, I'll fertilize in the spring, but otherwise they're good. And I think that this is going to be a beautiful backdrop for the greenhouse as, as you're looking from the house back. So I wanted to get one more plant planted today and that is one of my trees. It's technically one of my trees that I got at Matsuda's when we went tree shopping. Um, but I think you can call this a shrub, like a very large shrub, and that is my Roman candle podocarpus. This guy right here. Isn't this the coolest, coolest plant? So this is a podocarpus. It is a sport or a variety of the podocarpus crisilier that Jason and I, we've planted a bunch of them in the front yard, but those are bigger. Those will get like 45 to 50 feet tall. This one will only get about 10 to 15 feet tall and only about three to four feet wide. So it's pretty tall and pretty narrow. And then the podocarpus crisilier has just green foliage. It's beautiful, but this one, this one's special. This one's variegated and the new growth is really, really variegated. So it should be really fun to see how this one go or grows. I am planting it right here, right where I've been pre-soaking. You can see that little flag right there. And what it's gonna do is it's just gonna cap the end of this beautiful screen off right next to my wood burning fireplace. And just as a reminder, our patio is going to extend further out this way and extend further out that way. So this is just gonna kind of soften the edge a little bit. So because of the size of this Roman candle, People will call this, or, or people do call this podocarpus, a podocarpus shrub as opposed to a podocarpus tree. So I want to get my Roman candle podocarpus shrub planted right here. The problem is, is that this soil is terrible and we have not amended it yet and I have been pre-soaking it but it's still going to be very hard so I think I need some help and that help is going to come from my husband Jason who is uh football obsessed part of five count them five fantasy football leagues and might I remind you it's Sunday so not the best day to ask Jason for help, but <laughs> he did say if I timed it right and I got him during halftime, he would come out and he would help me dig this hole. So everybody cross your fingers. Let's hope that I timed it right. Did I time it right? Yeah, it's half time. <laughs> it's all good. Are you winning? Um, my bench is outscoring my starters. Is that good? Your bench? That's oh, it's so the people you don't have the people playing. people I don't have playing are doing better than the people I have playing. So you're not doing good. Not so good today. <laughs> you're in five leagues this year, right? Six. No. No. I added, no. I was, I added one from last year. Why does it keep going up every year? <laughs> it's so much fun. Okay, will you help me dig this hole? <laughs> uh, yeah, what, did you already get the, the crepe riddles done? Oh, yeah. Yeah, those are all in. Wow. All nice. five. Let me see. All five. Wow. Good, right? That's awesome. So I just need help with this one hole. That's it. Easy.
Thank you. You're welcome. See, I needed your help with that one. That's what it was. That's what it was. Like, it's so hard in some places. I know. There's just some places back here that it just is terrible. Yeah. Okay, you going back to watch football? Yep. Have fun. Thanks. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Okay, so we are all done planting this. So I've got five of the center stage pink crepe myrtle shrubs all around the greenhouse. Can't even tell, too small, but that's okay. And then we have the Roman candle podocarpus. So all in all, I think a good day. We got six shrubs, five shrubs and one big shrub in the ground. And most importantly, Jason didn't miss any of his football. So all in all, a good day. I hope you all enjoyed this and I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today.